Hey, my name is Will. I play a lot of different games, but one thing I enjoy doing is going back and experiencing games that I may have missed out on. So in this video, I'm going to be checking out a game that I only learned about fairly recently. I'm going to be checking out Virtual Boy Wario Land, a game that was released for Nintendo's doomed portable console in the 90s. Okay, I had a hard time calling this thing a portable. I still can't believe this is the design of the Virtual Boy. Uh, anyway, kick back, relax, and let's talk about the time I played Virtual Boy Wario Land. Okay, before we get started, let's quickly touch on the Virtual Boy. I won't really delve much into its history, because there are plenty of excellent videos on the topic already. But the gist of it is, in the 90s, Nintendo released a very short-lived console that was capable of displaying stereoscopic 3D images. For multiple reasons, the console was a flop, and it was only on the market for about a year. It never made it to Europe or Australia. It's considered one of Nintendo's biggest failures and barely gets acknowledged. So that's why I had never heard of it. Anyway, when I did finally learn about the console, the 3DS was still in its prime. I was pretty excited to learn that there was an obscure Wario Land game, and it looked pretty decent. Growing up, Wario Land 1 and 2 were some of my favorite games on the Game Boy. So I was hoping that Nintendo would release Virtual Boy Wario Land on the Virtual Console. I mean, it would have been perfect. The 3DS could display stereoscopic images, so it would have fit right at home. But sadly, that never happened. I guess it would have meant Nintendo acknowledging one of their biggest failures. Emulation did allow Virtual Boy games to be played on PC, but I never bothered with it because I figured the experience wouldn't have been as impressive. So fast forward to March 2024. I had recently finished streaming Wario Master of the Skies, so I had finally finished playing all the Wario Land games minus Virtual Boy Wario Land. I was working on a video to talk about the series as a whole, and decided to leave Virtual Boy Wario Land as a footnote. Since Nintendo never did anything about putting Virtual Boy games on the 3DS, I was pretty convinced there wasn't going to be an opportunity to play the game anytime soon with the 3D effects. But then seemingly out of nowhere, a Virtual Boy emulator for the 3DS with working stereoscopic 3D was released. I immediately put the Warrior Land series video on hold and began working on a new video, this one. So this is Virtual Boy Warrior Land. So talking about this game is going to be a bit strange because the footage you're seeing doesn't really do the game justice. I'm going to do my best to describe how the visuals look when looking at this on a 3DS where possible. Though the color red looks jarring when looking at this footage, when I was looking at this on the 3DS, it actually didn't look too bad. The 3D effect definitely turns down how strong the red is. But eventually I did change the color to be something more like the classic Game Boy. Just with the title screen and the demo footage that plays before starting the game, I was already impressed with how nice this looked. I mean, okay, I'm sure looking at this through a real Virtual Boy headset probably wouldn't have produced such a nice image. But on a 3DS, it looks great. It feels like there's multiple layers of depth going on and it's damn impressive. And again, it's from a game that was originally developed in the 90s, 16 years before the 3DS was released. The fact that the 3D effect is here in its full glory and not lost to time just shows how important emulation is for the preservation of history. Okay, let's take away this red footage and swap over to something more neutral. Ah, <sighs> much better. All right, sure. Ultimately, I played Virtual Boy Warrior Land without the authentic color palette. But I hope you'll forgive me in the interest of having a video that doesn't hurt your eyes after a couple of minutes. So in this game, Wario is on a quest in a jungle of sorts, and comes across a treasure vault after following some creatures. The floor collapses, Wario falls into the abyss, and now Wario must climb back up to the surface. The 3D effects here are all pretty neat. It feels like there's depth to the treasure vault, and the water looks pretty convincing. The animation of Wario falling into the abyss definitely looks like he was falling into the background. The basic gameplay here is the same as Wario Land 1. You have your charge ability, and you pick up hats that power up Wario. Wario also shrinks down to a smaller form when taking damage, which is something that doesn't happen anymore. Overall, Virtual Boy Wario Land feels a lot more like a sequel to Wario Land than Wario Land 2. In Wario Land 2, a lot of the core gameplay was changed into what would become standard for the series. I love the visuals for this game. I mean, okay, red color palettes aside, the sprites for Wario are great. I kept thinking about how impressive this would have been to me as a kid, because though the graphics on the Game Boy were good, these were on a whole other level visually. The music as well is perfect for a Wario game. Parts of the soundtrack also gave me Mega Man vibes, so I was really enjoying it. 
My first impressions as a whole were positive because the game was bringing a lot of nostalgia with it. So the first stage is Grotto Distress. After falling into the abyss, you head through a corridor where the 3D effect is in full showcase. There are these spike balls that swing back and forth between the foreground and background, and the effect on the 3DS looks pretty convincing. Once you get past this, the music begins and you enter the main room of the stage. It's a series of bridges and pits of lava that you must navigate through and also jump back and forth between the background and foreground. When you find these arrow platforms, you can have Wario leap into the background or back into the foreground. The 3D effect works really well for this, as there is definitely a sense of depth when jumping back and forth. The audio also becomes a bit quieter when you're in the background, so that's a neat touch. It was pretty cool to see this mechanic, because there are quite a few games that seem to reference this. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze and the upcoming game Anton Blast come to mind. This first stage also introduces you on how you are going to progress in the game. Each stage has a key hidden somewhere that you need to find to be able to unlock the door to the lift that takes you to the next floor. This one's hidden in plain sight so you don't miss it. This is very similar to what was happening in Warrior Land on the Game Boy. At the end of each stage you just needed to throw coins into the door to unlock it. So this, I guess, is a better version of that system. There's also a hidden treasure up for grab in most stages, so be sure you check every corner of the map. The treasure rooms are pretty neat looking as well. The cube-like design really pops with the 3D effect. I won't really talk about where to find all the treasures in their respective stages, but I will say it was really fun to hunt them all down. The nostalgia of the Game Boy games was too strong not to do this. Once you finish each stage, there is a sort of rest stop floor, where you can choose to play up to two minigames to either increase your number of lives or gain coins. In the lives minigame, you must jump back and forth between the foreground and background to try and collect hearts and the occasional diamond. There are also bats, who if you collide with will bankrupt your total. It's a pretty fun game, and again does an excellent job to showcase the 3D effect. The other minigame is a gambling minigame, where you pick a multiplier and then select one of four treasure bags. If you find the treasure, you hit the jackpot. If you don't, you lose money. You get three attempts total, but can choose to cash out at any time. This game is pretty similar to the coin game in Wario Land for the Game Boy, only the odds are less in your favor this time around. The 3D effect in this minigame is just giving the room a sense of depth, so nothing too fancy. After the minigame floor, you reach a floor that shows you your current progress, and the game also saves. Stage 2 is Guarded Prison. In this stage, you must go through a prison guarded by Viking-looking enemies and smaller enemies wearing skulls. The stage is pretty straightforward and has a couple of segments that occur in the background to mix things up a bit. It also has an underground section and introduces you to the dragon power-up. This was a power-up that was featured in Warrior Land for the Game Boy, and it functions pretty much the same, but looks a lot better. Stage 3 is Underwater Mayhem. This is a nice looking stage visually. The 3D effect really sells the look of the water here. If I could attempt to describe it, it would be that the top part of the wave is a solid and sits on the foreground, and then it gives the water a semi-transparent effect? I don't know, I hope that makes sense. This stage has enemies that move between the foreground and background. There's a fish you can attack only when it comes into the foreground, and there's also a large shark that chomps at you. So you need to wait until it returns into the hole that it came from. The spike balls from the opening stage also make a return, so that was cool to see as well. This was the first stage that had some semblance of a challenge, so it was a lot of fun. Stage 4 is the first boss. Before you enter the boss encounter, there's a mini fight with a turtle head looking thing. This fight caught me off guard as I was paying more attention to the door in the background. So I did take a hit initially. Once you beat the totem, you leap into the background to begin the first boss fight. The boss is this strange looking dragon thing that has a flail attached to its head. The room here looks pretty neat as the 3D effect really makes it look like you're in a cavern. The boss starts in the background and then will throw its flail towards you in the foreground. These throws happen pretty quickly so it did take me a few attempts to get used to it. Once you dodge three times, the boss will leap into the foreground with you and will attempt to slam you with the flail a few times before leaping back into the background. You must time your jump so you stomp the boss in the head, but not take damage from the flail. The fight is pretty tricky, and it was certainly a lot more difficult than I expected a first boss fight to be. Once I got the hang of the timing, the boss went down pretty easily. Stage 5 is Crowded Forest. This stage is a pretty nice looking stage as well. The 3D effect makes the trees and the background elements really pop and sell you the idea that you're exploring a forest. This stage sees the introduction of the Eagle power-up. This power-up is functionally similar to the Jet power-up from Warrior Land on the Game Boy. 
but it has a little more flexibility when it comes to movement at the cost of it not lasting as long. The stage is divided into two paths, an upper path in the trees that has platforming challenges with thorns and enemies throwing spears, and a lower path where there is a bit of a maze to solve by jumping between the background and the foreground. There are also a few secret areas to find along the way. The stage also introduces a new concept to the game, which is combining powers. When Warrior is equipped with either the dragon or the eagle power-up, and then acquires the other, the two powers combine and become the king dragon upgrade. This upgrade is really cool as it gives Warrior the eagle's power of flight, and also allows Warrior to shoot fireballs that can pierce through enemies in certain blocks. It's a really fun power-up. The only bummer is the idea wasn't really explored beyond this, as this is the only combination power that exists in the game. It would have been cool to see more powers and have them be able to mix with one another. But yeah, pretty cool concept. Stage 6 is Dangerous Waterfalls. This stage is initially set in a cavern-like area where there is a river that Wario must traverse across. Again, the water looks pretty neat here. The 3D effect really sells the idea of being in a cave with a river. The first section of the stage is a mix of swimming upstream and avoiding obstacles, with some side sections that have some treasure up for grabs. Once clearing this section, you must traverse up a waterfall using a mix of platforming and swimming, and then complete a final swimming section where you must navigate a maze of underwater currents to reach the end of the level. In this section, the block-like design with the bubbles really helps sell the 3D effect. Stage 7 is Quicksand Desert. This stage has a lot of layering with the 3D effects thanks to the dunes and the pillars in the background. Of all the stages, I think this was the one that impressed me the most because the parallax effect looked really awesome. The stage is a series of platforming challenges over quicksand and cactus pits. You also get to ride these tornadoes with eyeballs on them. They're quirky and weird, but that's what I love about Wario games, honestly. The stage also has an indoor area that has some more background and foreground sections to explore. These really aren't anything too special, but if you're into treasure hunting and finding secrets by smashing walls, they're welcome. Stage 8 is the second boss. After another fight with the totem head, you leap into a door that takes you to a massive desert arena. This boss looks like a weird mix of a sandworm with a shark with arms. Oh yeah, and it's also wearing goggles and a snorkel. It's a weird design, but you know what? It's on point with Warrior games, so I dig it. The fight is the boss diving from the background to the foreground and taking out one of the platforms that you can stand on. The key here is to confuse the boss when it resurfaces to give you the window required to stomp it on the head. I felt this boss was easier than the first boss as dodging wasn't as tricky here. Also visually this fight looks great. The desert setting and the boss moving around in the background really looks great with the 3D effect. Stage 9 is Fruit Farm. This stage is a fruit factory where you must grab a melon and launch it into the background to hit a target. This stage is pretty short if you can get the timing down quick enough, which is something that I did not do. There are some side paths for treasure hunting, but other than that, it's a pretty straightforward stage. The 3D effect in this stage is pretty simple. The lighting is what stands out the most, and other than that, it's just pretty standard room depth. Stage 10 is Spooky Mansion. This stage is pretty reminiscent of the ghost houses found in Super Mario World. The stage is full of lots of rooms and corridors that you must navigate to find the key to be able to exit the stage. This means you can take your time and explore. The 3D effect is pretty cool when you are fighting these smiley face enemies. They really do feel more like a ghost when looking at them with the 3D effect on. So that's something that gets lost when looking at normal footage of this. The room also feels very 3D as well with the walls and paintings being in perspective. Stage 11 is Machine Madness. This stage appears to be an abandoned forge in terms of design. It has a lot of platforming challenges with platforms that either flip and drop you into the fire or fling you into the background. At first I didn't realize that these platforms could throw you into the background, so I did miss out on a few things in this stage. But the second time around I did a full exploration of the stage and managed to get all the secrets. The stage also has machines that drop some kind of acid and fans that turn on and off to increase the challenge of the platforming sections. The stage overall felt like something out of Mega Man with its industrial setting, so this was a stage that I really enjoyed. The stage had a lot of depth with the 3D effects thanks to the fire and ruined walls that mask out the background. The parallax effect works extra well with these sections with the walls. Stage 12 is the third boss. After a slightly trickier totem head fight, you head into an industrial looking arena where you must fight the boss who is in a tank-like vehicle. The boss starts in the background and fires a volley of cannonballs that you must dodge. The boss will continue to fire these at you periodically until you jump into the background. Once on the same layer as the boss, the boss will then turn to shoot at you and you must dodge all the projectiles in order to be able to get close to it. So with this boss, it took me a while to figure out how to damage it. Every time I would get close to it, 
the boss would just jump to the opposite layer, and I would have to repeat the whole dodging process again. So the key to this fight is you must first get to the background layer and then force the boss to jump to the foreground. Once the boss is on the foreground layer, you must line yourself up with the boss and then leap onto it to stomp it. Once stomped, the boss will be forced out of its vehicle, and then you must stomp on its head to damage it before it can get back into the tank. The timing is pretty tricky to get right, and it certainly did take a few attempts for me to finish this. It's a challenging fight overall, so I had fun with it. The boss leaping between the layers and shooting at you works really well with the 3D, so I hope it's something you can imagine what it would be like. Stage 13 is Temple of Doom. This is the final standard stage in the game, and sees you navigating a massive temple that is full of platforming challenges involving the spike balls from the first level. The stage is a little bit of a maze between the background and foreground rooms that you must navigate in order to find the key. The stage does have a little bit of backtracking, but it's not too bad. The footage makes this level feel pretty flat, but when you play this on the 3DS, there is a surprising amount of depth with the various elements, so it's a pretty neat looking design overall. And now we come to stage 14, the final boss. After yet another totem fight, we come to a room that can only be described as a void. Though simple in design, the wavy effects on the left and right really make this room look ethereal when looking at this on the 3DS. Much like the final boss itself who looks like a vengeful spirit. So the fight itself is pretty straightforward. You just need to leap at the boss at the right moment to smack it in the nose. The rest is just dodging the boss's various attacks by either jumping into the background or dodging the attack in the foreground. It does get a little tricky towards the end because the boss speeds up its movements, so the timing to hit it on the nose becomes a bit trickier. It's a decent challenge, and it's a fun fight overall. Once the final boss is down, Warrior comes back to the entrance of the cavern and places the treasures he discovered along the way back into their slots. So initially, I played through the game pretty casually and didn't bother finding all the treasures. So Warrior gets this sad look on his face, leaves with a bag of coins, and finds his plane completely vandalized. And then the credits roll where Wario is riding some weird creature and its family tagging along. And yeah, that's it for the game. It's worth noting that like other Wario games, this game has different endings based on whether or not you found all the treasure, and also how fast you ended up clearing the game. Since this game was a blast, I decided to run through the game a second time to collect all the treasures and see a different ending. But I won't spoil that here. So yeah, I do hope you enjoyed this look at Virtual Boy Wario Land. A game that I honestly didn't think I'd ever get to experience, let alone with the 3D visuals. The game is a lot of fun and brought back a lot of memories and nostalgia for sure. It's just a shame that because of the failure of the Virtual Boy hardware that a perfectly good game is living in obscurity. But hopefully one day we can see it be played in a more official capacity. One can hope. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video, as it'll let me know to keep doing more. Also, stay tuned for a follow-up video on the Warrior Land series as a whole, as I have now truly played them all. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is to hit that old like button. Or, if you want to see me play Virtual Boy Warrior Land and more, be sure to check out my stream archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights Australian time, if you ever want to catch me live. Anyway, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, Thanks for watching.